Hello, this is all about creating your video. I'm going to be using Adobe Premiere. You don't have to because the principle is pretty much the same in any application. But if we open up the new Adobe Premiere, we get a very weird window, which is my little rant because I can't see the need for this. Very similar to Final Cut Pro, but let's ignore it. Let's start a new project from scratch. Right, let's create a new project. We're going to name it, we're going to save it, ideally into an assets folder so that all your content is in the folder. We choose our workspace, our basically our panels that we want open. I normally go for all panels if it's a small screen and then delete what I don't need. You can always hide those panels or reopen the panels as you need them. So this is the range of panels that I've got open and I'm going to remove some of them. I won't say delete because it's the wrong word, but remove some of them. Now we import our first item. In this case, it's going to be a video clip, a pre-processed 1080. So it's 1920 by 1080 video clip. Once we've imported it or brought it in, you'll see it on the left-hand side. We drag it into the timeline panel, which is blank at the moment, but it'll automatically create a timeline for us. I think it's important to check your sequence settings. So if you open up your sequence settings, you'll see the top panel here. It's got 1920 by 1080, which is a high definition 16 by 9. If we load in 4K video and we drag it to our timeline, of course you might not know what size that footage is when you bring it in, because there's no message to tell you that because you bring it into an existing timeline. And of course you can resize it to fit that frame size. Good time to do a breakout. Really to demonstrate, if we brought in 4K footage, so we import it, but we're going to use the default settings of the sequence settings, which is 1920 by 1080. And we bring this 4K into it, and then we drag that to our timeline. It comes up with a message. Do we want to change the settings, or do we want to keep existing settings? Obviously, if we change them, it'll be the 4K sequence settings. If we keep them, it will be too big. It'll be largely larger than. So this is the 4K settings or 4K frame size. Now, if I type in the 1920 by 1080, which is kind of your standard HD frame size, that footage will be too big. So we come, it gives us this message. So obviously we have a choice now. We can either resize the footage to fit the frame we resize the settings to fit the 4K, so we take the settings up. And I decided to scale the footage to fit the frame size. So the breakout ending, getting back to our original. Let's give you some other tips and tricks. This is the eye, the little eye that can switch on and off for viewing or hiding. You can drag these tracks, you can create more tracks by just simply dragging up duplicating or whatever, dragging up and creates more tracks. And the same with the audio, you can drag down and down. You can lock or unlock individual tracks, video or audio. There's an advantage, obvious advantage, and there's of course a disadvantage, in as much as you might delete one and the other one while it's locked won't be deleted, it won't move. Here we go, let's demonstrate this. I've deleted the video, but the audio, because it's locked, has remained. Right, let me demonstrate one of the disadvantages of not having it locked, particularly with audio, because quite often when you bring in a clip, it will overwrite the audio depending on where you put it. If it's locked, it won't be overwritten. Let me expand the audio track so we can see this clearer, how it overwrites depending on where it's been put into the timeline. The audio might overwrite. Then we lock it and we bring in that clip again and it won't, it just simply won't go over that other audio track. Let me demonstrate once again the potential danger of locking a track. So here we're locking the audio track. I'm just expanding it so we can see, unlocking it. Uh, let's lock it again, and then let's move it, or try and move it. You'll see that I get this warning sign and only the video track has been moved because it's not locked, and the audio track stays the same. So if I unlock it, they both move together. You can also unlink it. If you right-click, you can link or unlink the audio. Then you can move the audio separately, delete it and do whatever you want, or the video you can move around as well. 
Of course, there's a potential danger in unlinking or linking, but unlinking, there is that potential hazard that you might forget that it is unlinked and you move your audio or move your video, supposing that your audio is going to move with it, but it doesn't. So just, just watch out for that. Okay, moving on. Let's look at the effects. Let's look at some of the, some of the effects anyway. You've got an effects panel and you've got a lot of built-in options and built-in effects that you can use and look at. And with this footage being very washed out, I'm going to quickly play around with some of the color. Other than using the effects, you can also work with the blend mode, what they call the blend mode. At the moment, it's the default is normal, but you might want to do an overlay or multiply. I'll quite often switch on and switch off the little eye icon so I can see what's happening underneath that layer. And now I'm going to play with the multiply up, up it and down it. <laughs> Don't worry about the quality. There's so many options. I'm just playing around. Let's have a look at the, the sound, adjusting the sound. That's probably the next important thing. And ideally, you want to choose this little pen icon. And then you can add keyframes. You can drag up and down to change the volume. This is just changing the volume up and down. That's the one bar. But there's a little keyframe that is added. And now I can drag, you can leave that keyframe and I can drag down. There's your little keyframe. Get the end here, drag it down, and I've got a fade in. That's going to fade in. If I expand the track, you can probably see it a little better. So you've got a fade in and a fade out. Right, keyframing. Let's look at keyframes. Really important and something you'll find in most motion applications. You can keyframe pretty much anything. Here I'm going to keyframe the saturation. So it's overly oversaturated and I'm going to keyframe it to black and white, to undersaturated. And then as it moves along the timeline, you'll go from one keyframe to the other. You'll see the change in color. Let's add a few more keyframes. If I click on them wherever they, my cursor is, I'll create a keyframe. If I click on it again, I might delete it, but it normally gives you a warning sign. This is overly <laughs> oversaturated, changing to black and white. Right, let's Create some keyframes for scale and position, for example. If I click on the little clock on the left, it starts my first keyframe. And then I can move on the timeline and click on the little blue circles to create a second keyframe. If while I'm on there, it'll alter, it'll create that. So you can see as I'm dragging this, I'm scrubbing across from one keyframe to the other. Now let's go in and change the size. Right, very abruptly, he ends this lesson, but I'll continue in the next part in the next lesson. Join me.